the word. You can't, in the natural, we can't just eat cake and cookies, which we ice cream. We do have to sometimes eat vegetables and food. You understand why? Because all those foods have nutrients that strengthens our immune system. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, uh, people's immune system are broke down because they're not eating proper. Mm -hmm. All right? That works in the spirit as well. If you're not eating properly, if you're not eating a full course meal, your, your spiritual immune system will break down. Mm -hmm. How do you know when it's broke down? When you're depressed? When you have suicide thoughts? Mm -hmm. All those are, are, are evidence, all those are evidences of you not being fully fed spiritually. Mm -hmm. Because a Christian, there's no way that as a Christian, a, a, a spiritual Christian should have ever be depressed. It don't mean that you don't have problems, but as a Christian, we, we have the joy of the Lord in us. Mm -hmm. And the joy of the Lord is not based on my circumstances. My circumstances don't have to be in place for me to have joy. That's right. And that joy of the Lord strengthens me to overcome any depression. Mm -hmm. So when I'm depressed, that I'm not filled spiritually, I'm not, uh, I haven't fed myself spiritually enough. You understand what I'm saying? We have people that uh, the only time they open their Bibles is on Sunday, doing service. They don't own it anymore. You have some people that don't even come to nothing but Sunday service. You have to now. What would happen if we only ate a physical meal on Sunday and never ate eat no more till the next Sunday? Oh, well, we'd be in trouble, wouldn't we? You walk around, you couldn't understand it. Well, what makes you think that your spirit man can just feed off one meal a week? You can't. That, see, we want to do and have what Jesus had, did and had, but we got to do what Jesus did. Jesus prayed all the time. Jesus stayed in the Word. Matter of fact, He was the Word. You know what I mean? So that's what we have to do. But see, we 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 live in a lazy society. We want everything handed to us. That's why we get in prayer lines and and, and pray that our faith grows and just zap me so I read my Bible. No, you got to put forth effort. That's right. Jesus mm -hmm. did it all, and then you have the Holy Spirit to help you. Amen? Amen. I'm going to back off before I go to the middle. Okay. <laughs> verse, verse 11 says, Put on the whole arm of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. See, he's talking about deception. The wiles of the devil is, is, is how he's deceptive, and he does that through our thought life. All right? In uh, Psalm 119, 98 says that the word makes us wiser than our enemy. That's right. Amen. See, when I put on the whole armor of God and I stay in that word, when the enemy tries to deceive me, the word of God makes me wiser than him. And I can see his deception. I can recognize his deception. Amen? Amen. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. When people come at you, it's not the people, it's the spirit right. behind that person. That's right. That we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So he's telling us here that the battle is not a human battle. So if, if, if the enemy uses one person to come against you, and let's say you defeat that person physically, you know what he's going to do? Right, raise up another person. And if he has to raise two or three of them up to come at you, and most of the time, the people that come at us are results of you and I telling the enemy our weakness. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, you might say something like, you know what, every time I hear so-and-so talk, he just make my blood crawl. He just, mm -hmm. just gets on my last nerve. Well, you know what? Yeah. The enemy's going to have that person you're talking about around you and have that person talking all the time. Because you know that, that that's going to get on your nerves. How do you know it's going to get on your nerves? Because you're cold. Because <laughs> he can't read your mind. That's right. The only way that he knows a weakness that you have is that you told him. And we do that all the time. Boy, so it's for you. You know what? I just, I'm just waiting for her to say one thing to me. And I'm going to tell her off. Well, you know what? The enemy is going to prompt her if she's available to say that one thing to you. That's right. So that you can tell him off. 
Exactly right. You see what I'm saying? So, see, it's not, see, a lot of times we blaming this person and the devil, but most of the time it's us. Mm -hmm. And we're doing it through our words. Mm -hmm. Letting it in and That's why you need to think before you talk. Mm -hmm. Don't just go opening your mouth. And if, I always encourage you people, if you're angry, all of us have experienced different types of emotions. Mm -hmm. All right? If you feel angry, don't respond out of anger. Leave the situation, calm down, and then come back when, you, when you're in a calm spirit, when you're in a more peaceable spirit. Because if you react in anger, there's no limit to what you may do. You may start out verbally, but it can end up physically. And it can get to the point where if, if you allow the enemy to, he'll cause you to really seriously hurt somebody or somebody to seriously hurt you. So we have to see, we, we as Christians, we as believers, we have to set the example. That's right. Each and every one of us are leaders. You don't have to be a leader to stay in the church, but you're a leader. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when you said that you were a Christian, everybody started watching you. Mm -hmm. And they're watching to see what you do, how you do it, and when you do it. And who you're doing it with. Mm -hmm. All right? So you have to, we have to discipline ourselves. We have to guard ourselves. We have to guard our actions. Sometimes we can't hang out with everybody. Sometimes we can't go everywhere. Sometimes we just need to stay home and, and sit at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Be like Mary. Mary right. sat at the feet of Jesus. Martha was busy. And got mad because Mary wouldn't help her. But Mary was doing the best of things. She was sitting at the feet of Jesus. She was looking. That's, right. That's what we need to do sometimes. Sometimes we get a little too busy. We got too much going on in our life. We got too much stuff we doing. I'm going to tell you something. If you're too busy for Jesus, you're too busy. Mm -hmm. Just like we find time for our special program that we like, you need to find time for Jesus. You need to find time for Jesus. 